and inflation. Who's to blame? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode at Nova Rice Invest, your channel for financial education. So today we're going to talk about who is to blame about inflation. Who is responsible for the rate of inflation that we have today? Who's responsible for everything becoming so expensive and having our salaries unable to keep up with the cost of living? I know there has been plenty of names thrown around. Uh, Biden is one of them. Powell is one of them. Um, you name it. But before we start throwing out names out there, I think it's important for us to truly understand what led to inflation and what really pushed it to the way it is today. I actually had a lot of fun learning about it and I want to share it with you. So let's get started. So before we jump in, I want to give proper credit to the Wall Street Journal. I was actually reading this article about the stock market. And as I was scrolling down, I stumbled across this video about inflation and who really is to blame for it. I saw it. I actually had a lot of fun learning about it. But just like I have always mentioned in this channel, you should always trust, but verify. They share their opinion. They presented their facts. It was fun. I learned a lot. However, I still wanted to do a little bit of my own digging to further understand what happened and also to corroborate the facts. And here's how I did it. So first thing, I went back and look at the historical data, right? So prior to the pandemic, uh, we haven't really heard much about inflation. Yeah, we knew it was there, but it wasn't as much of a common theme to talk about like it is today. So I decided to do a little bit of digging and I thought that the right timing to start analyzing all of these numbers was from the moment that the pandemic started because that's when all the rounds of stimulus started happening. That's what the shutdown started happening. Uh, and it led to everything else that happened afterwards to what we're living today. So I decided to run the numbers starting on December 2019, which was the timeline and where we started to hear about the first uh, COVID cases happening in China all the way until today. So we can see here that inflation levels uh, back in December 2019 was at 2.3, which falls within healthy levels because a healthy rate of inflation is usually around 2%. And then we'll see all the fluctuations that happen in between all the way to what we are seeing right here in this graph, uh, which are the main numbers at 8.6. At the time of the recording of this episode, we still don't have the June number, so we're going to have to work with what we have. All right. So now I want to go on to the tablet and begin our analysis. So the first thing I want to draw is this big circle right here, um, or what it seems to be a circle. I know it's not perfect, but you kind of got the gist of it. And this will represent the inflation bubble. Okay, so this is a bubble and everything that's going to happen inside of it. It's what's going to contribute to making this bubble bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, now. Like I mentioned earlier, there has been a lot of names thrown out there and um, you hear Biden being blamed for. Uh, you also hear uh, Jerome Powell being blamed for everything that has been happening. Some people mentioned the stimulus. But again, um, before blaming someone or something, let's just look at the facts to understand the bigger pictures so that not only we get to educate ourselves, but also kind of like use that information to our advantage and making the best informed decisions as possible to preserve our money and to preserve our net worth, right? So the whole COVID situation started, like I said, somewhere in between late 2019 all the way to, you know, today, because we're still hearing some cases and some variations. So let's just say 2022, right? I know some states are more open than others in terms of like the fact that you have to wear masks and stuff like that. But in some other parts of the world, it's still happening, like, for example, in China. Right. So we're going to use 2019 and 2022 as our timeline. And so in order to get started, we are going to have to look into who was responsible for the decision making uh, in our country at the time, right? Who approved the stimulus, who was in power, who made all the nominations. And when I looked into 2019, right, we have that Trump was our president at the time. So what do we know about Trump, right? First, well, we know he was the president and he was sworn in on January 20th, uh, 2017. And then subsequently, um, he needed to name a 
Fed chairman, right? He needed somebody to be empowered to make the decisions about the economy, inflation, interest, you name it. And he picked uh, Jerome Powell. He thought Powell was the right candidate for the role. And he came in in November 2017, right? Fast forward a couple of years, we hit 2019, 2020, right? And that's when we hear, you know, anything that's related to COVID and all of these other things that are happening. And um, as a result of that, the government uh, needed to take action in order to help its citizen. Let's just put it that way. And so we started seeing a bunch of rounds of stimulus. And among the first one on the list was the CARES Act. And I know a lot of you have heard about uh, the CARES Act, uh, the loans, the PPP loans, the EIDLs that a lot of the small businesses and some even big businesses were taking advantage of. And the CARES Act was rolled out um, and March 2020 for a total of $2 trillion. Then shortly after that, we heard about another round of stimulus, right? And this was actually pulled out in December 2020 for a total of $900 billion, right? So now let's remember these two dates. We have March 2020th and we have December 2020th, right? So let's just look at the uh, chart right here to gather the inflation numbers for that timeline. So we have January over here, February, March. So March 2020 had an inflation of 1.5. And then if we fast forward to when the last round of stimulus was pushed out in December 2020, we have that our inflation is at 1.4. But at the same time, in January 2021, that's when uh, Trump stepped down as a president and then Biden got sworn in. So um, this is a transitional period. And even within this transitional period, we're looking at um, inflation numbers at 1.4. So we're going to gather 1.5 uh, in March all the way until the end of uh, Trump's presidency, since it's, you know, they're right next to each other right here. So there you have it. We'll have 1.5 over here and we have 1.4 over here. Just keep that in mind. Now, I want to take a moment to remind you that if you like this episode, feel free to hit the like button right here below so you can help this episode rank and help others like you looking for information of this kind. And if you happen to know somebody who will find this information useful, feel free to share the love and send this episode their way so you can help change your life for the better. Back to the episode. And now we're going to transition into Biden's presidency, right? So what happened during Biden's presidency? So Biden got sworn in on uh, January 20th, 2021. And then he ended up picking Powell for a second term on November 2021. And then shortly after, his administration ended up rolling up another stimulus package for $1.9 trillion on March 2021. So let's look at the inflation numbers. So we have January 2021 right here. So the new inflation numbers are at 1.4. And then by the time the round of stimulus came in, we were talking about March. So it went from 1.4 to 2.6. And here I have to prove to corroborate that this is what happened. So we're going to go backwards. So once again, Biden signs a 1.9 trillion stimulus. Uh, Biden nominates Jerome Powell over here, November 2021, as the Fed chairman. Um, this is when Biden was sworn in. And then as we keep going back in the timeline, we have Trump here um, where he signed the $900 billion stimulus uh, package. Trump signs the $2 trillion coronavirus package back in March 2020 back into when Trump nominates Jerome Powell as the Fed chair and uh, all the way back to where he was first sworn in as president. OK, so there you have it. January 2021, 1.4 and then inflation in March 2021 at 2.6. Now, when you look at this bubble right right here, it will be very tempting to blame Biden right from the get go. Uh, for, you know, everything that's happening on inflation. But remember, things don't end there. If you were to compare some of the things that were happening uh, during this uh, timeline, starting from Trump all the way transitioning to Biden, you have to remember once again that we were dealing with uh, coronavirus issues, right? That led to the shutdown 
of the economy. People had to stay home. People weren't going to work. Um, and at the same time, we had to deal with supply chain issues, which, you know, did not get any easier. Uh, starting from uh, the Trump administration going all the way into Biden because um, more and more people were buying stuff. People were at home watching a lot of Netflix and doing their thing at home. They have a lot of free time in their hand. So people bought a lot. And uh, while people were buying a lot, there were some others that chose to stay at home to stay safe or to take care of their family. And they were not going to work. And so guess what's going to happen? Uh, people are demanding more stuff. People want to buy stuff. But then there's nobody on the other side of the equation making things happen, uh, providing that delivery, making that product. So the more people wanted to buy, the less was available. And that consequently led to a increase in prices as the only way to control that demand. But it turns out that because of all the round of stimulus that was happening, uh, none of that was controlled. If anything, people kept buying. So we're having a bunch of supply issue over here happening. And that trickle into the Biden administration. And then eventually, a year later, something else broke down. And that's the war between Russia and Ukraine, right? So this war broke up in February 2022. And inflation up in this point, we have January, February is at 7.9. Okay, so inflation, here you got it. And the notes, we're talking about 7.9. Then, as if that wasn't enough, a month later, China got another round of COVID hits, right? And the country went in complete lockdown once again. And so China also contributed to more issues aside from the ones that Russia had contributed to already because Russia uh, was exporting, you know, a lot of its natural resources onto Europe, which eventually everything trickles down uh, to what we see here. And uh, China as a manufacturing company, um, a lot of things were getting in standby. People were not working. So whatever was happening over here, kept trickling down down to here and this just contributing added to everything that was going on so uh it's kind of like a like an ecosystem here where everything feeds off one another so up until this point the china lockdown happened and uh march and that means that inflation in march has gone up to 8.5 so we got march here 8.5 so that number continues to go up right now once again we still don't have the full blown picture. I know it is very easy to just simply blame the stimulus, blame Powell, blame Biden, or why not even blame Trump, right? Now, I wanna pause for a second and ask for your opinion. What do you think about what I'm sharing so far? Let me know down in the comment section below and your comment will help me get to know you better so that way I can design a much better episode that can meet your needs in terms of what you're looking to learn. Now, back to the episode. But there's still another component that needs to be taken into account. And that is the consumer right here. So the consumer can be anybody. It can be the individual consumer, people like you, me, and Chipito, right? We do and consume and buy stuff. And, you know, like we just like to take in and enjoy life, right? But there's also the other type of consumer, and those are like the big businesses, the big businesses who need to buy product, who need to buy items, who need for imports to happen and all of that stuff. All of that continue to be in demand. Nothing has stopped. The fact that the virus took place over the world and that a lot of families needed to take shelter and stayed at home and not go out, did not stop the need to eat, did not stop the need to buy stuff and consume. So everything was happening, right? So as we mentioned, when the shutdowns took place, uh, money was actually flowing into the economy. So we got the CARES Act, we got more stimulus, and we got stimulus over here, right? So that in a way pushes people to use that money, right? So you have access to all of this money and you can be either saving it or you could be spending it. But either way, this behavior was contributing towards the inflation as well. Why? Because if you were saving it, that means you weren't using that money, but that never stopped the banks from lending your money to other people 
through programs like the CARES Act, uh, any other type of stimulus or any type of regular mortgages or loan, your savings are always loaned out to someone else who is actually willing to spend your money in exchange for interest. So what you thought that your money was just simply sitting there and um, being saved for your future, that in fact was actually loaned out to someone else, which in fact ends up contributing towards this inflation bubble because they're using that money to either buy more properties, to either do more business or create more demand. And the worst part for the saver is that because you didn't use that money, you're now finding out that your money is worth less because of inflation, which means your purchasing power has actually diminished, right? And if you are the spender, you could be out there buying uh, clothes. You could be out there spending it on um, experiences, going out to nice and fancy restaurants. Or why not? You could be investing it, quote unquote, right? You could be investing it in real estate. You could be investing it in the stock market. None of it matters because it still contributes towards something. The more clothes you demand, uh, the least there's available for the rest of the world, which means that companies or manufacturers need to keep making those. But because no one was working or the majority of the population was not working, that meant that the companies needed to increase price and people were happily um, able to pay for those because they were getting access to stimulus money. Same thing with experiences. How many of you ended up going to the restaurant more often than before because now you didn't have to work or you could be working from home and that cut down on your commute, which means that as soon as you're done working, you wanted to go out and enjoy a nice experience at a restaurant. And restaurants also took advantage of this by creating outdoor spaces. And in places like in New York, it actually wound up being beneficial for most restaurant owners because as you know, in New York, everything is tiny. Uh, there's very little space, but when you take on the street and you put your business outside on the street, you wind up getting more real estate, which allows you to put more tables. And if you are the type of like to invest, well, you already know what happened to the housing market. More and more people started buying in. They took advantage of cheap money. The rates were low. Uh, some of them had the support of some stimulus package, some stimulus money, and the rest is history. You don't need me to keep repeating myself. Same thing happened with the stock market. The more people got money, the more people had free time in their hand, the more they went in and they started investing it in the stock market, driving the prices to an all-time high, as all of you might have seen in the news up until this point. So as you can see, not one party is responsible for inflation, not just Trump, not just Biden, not just Powell. Uh, it is an ecosystem, like I said, and everybody plays a little bit of a role that contributes to everything that's happening, whether you are inside the country in the United States or whether something could be happening across the globe in Russia, Ukraine, or even in China. We all live in a world where everything is interconnected and we all could be playing either a big or a small role contributing to this bubble to getting bigger and bigger every time. Now, the question I asked myself when I was digging into this is, well, um, so did I make a bad move by investing in real estate and the stock market and stuff like that? Not really, because in the end, we all did what we thought was best to protect our money to protect our net worth and uh, making it last until we need it or until retirement. Remember, there could be market corrections, whether it's with real estate or the stock market, but we're here to invest for the long run, right? As long as you invest for the long run and you keep that in mind, your money eventually will keep going up over time and increasing in value, or at least that is the expectation. What's important here is that you're not making any rash decisions or that you just simply sat there and did nothing with it, right? Now you understand inflation a little bit better. We talked about how to invest in certain assets or even invest in debt to help you protect that money over the long term. You had to do something. You couldn't just sit there and do nothing. Now, while I still have you here, I want to invite you to check out this episode on the side that's going to help you complement everything you just learned today. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.